One main reason why people get divorced, which our divorce rate has skyrocketed, is expectations. Their expectation of the other person goes unmet. Their expectation of the other person goes unmet. So they may meet the expectations on Valentine's Day, but they don't meet the expectations after Valentine's Day is over. All right, let's get into it, everybody. You already know what time it is. It's February. It means it's love month. It's Valentine's. But we just don't want it to be a month where we try hard to be somebody we're not. We want this to be every month when it comes to our relationships and the people that we say we love the most. So we're talking about relationships. We're going to talk about marriage for a little bit because we don't want Valentine's Day to be a day. We want it to be every day. We just want it to be a one day celebration of who we really are and how we really uh, uh, move forward in our relationships. And so it's important for you to understand this one key. This is going to be simple. It's going to be hard at the same time. And that is found based on Mark 10, 45, the greatest of all time. Jesus Christ, Mark 10, 45, it says that he did not come to be served, but he came to serve and give his life away as a ransom for the many. So how many of us in our relationships have come to give our lives away? How many of our relationships are in our marriage right now to make sure that we're being more of a giver than we are a receiver? See, most people want to project their expectations on the other person, which is why the relationship doesn't last long. If I could give you one reason, one main reason why people get divorced, which our divorce rate has skyrocketed, is expectations. Their expectation of the other person goes unmet. Their expectation of the other person goes unmet. So they may meet the expectations on Valentine's Day, but they don't meet the expectations after Valentine's Day is over. And so there are unmet expectations. How much money we're supposed to have? I expect it. Um, how, how, uh, uh, how you're supposed to treat me as a man or how you're supposed to be as a wife? Well, I expect it based on my history and based on the way I was raised and based on where I came from and based on all the things I was taught. I expected you the, to be all of those things that I had learned from my past. Even though my past had a lot of sin in it, even though my past had a lot of friction in it, even though my past maybe had family instability in it, even though my past had all of these things that maybe were negative and not just positive, I want you to fix all that. And if you can't fix all that, if you can't be that, then it's going to be a problem. So what you have is two people who cannot function in a Christ-like relationship because they're only there to receive what they need from the other person. And I've said it before, if you have two givers in a relationship, you have two people who automatically receive. If you have two receivers in a relationship, you only have two takers, which means the relationship's end ends with both people feeling robbed. And so you got to remember that Valentine's Day cannot be an everyday thing if you're only giving good gifts that day, but you don't give good gifts every day. And I'm not just talking about stuff. Stuff is OK, but I'm talking about yourself. What Jesus did is he didn't just give stuff. He didn't just do miracles for people. He didn't just help people. He did that. It was tangible. Jesus's life was very tangible in what he did, but he gave the greatest thing away. His life. He did not come, the king of kings, to be served. Well, why not? He's a king. That's what most men think, don't we? That's what most women think, too. A king or a queen is supposed to be served. I'm supposed to come home, sit on the couch, grab this real remote. I'm supposed to wait for you to cook this food. Come on over here while I watch TV. I'm settled in. I've been working all day. You've just been at home with these kids. Did you hear what I just said? I've been working all day. You've just been at home with these kids. Ladies, don't you want to knock him out when he say that stuff? I know if I ever mentioned that to my wife, we got five kids, she'd be like, you worked all day. Joker, you got a lunch break. <laughs> I didn't even get a lunch break, right? So we understand that it's about giving and not just receiving and really giving your life away and understanding that this thing is going to stick together, not by feeling robbed, but by making sure we're giving. Some of the things that I've done in my marriage that really surprised my wife is I wanted to prove, okay, let's be a giver. On my 35th birthday, I'm not bragging, but I'm just saying. On my 35th birthday, I watched the kids and two of my wife's girlfriends came out, woke her up from the bed and took her out for the day on my dime and shopped for her, bought her things because it was a blessing for me. That was a birthday for me to bless my wife. On my 40th birthday, some of my friends that are in this room right now listening to me record this remember that I showered her with gifts on my 40th birthday because I wanted to tangibly show that this just isn't about me. I even trained my kids that way and talked to them. They ain't started yet, but we getting there. On their birthday, I keep telling them, hey man, or daughter, why, why have you not given your mom a card on your birthday? And they look at me like, 
what? what? Why would I give mom a car? Like she's supposed to give to me. And this is how we approach our marriages. You here for me. Like she's supposed to give to me. Where's my money? Why don't you pin them dollars up on my shirt or send this to my card? Or they looking for money. They looking for prizes. They look, and I have to remind them, Joku, you was asleep when you was born. You know what you did when you was born? Nothing. Your mom did all the work. I don't know why we even celebrating you on your birthday. Okay, we're excited you're here. But as far as a workload, all the work was on your mom. So if all the work was on your mom, then why is it that you on your birthday trying to be celebrated? Shouldn't we celebrate your mom on your birthday since she's the one who did all the work and you wasn't there to see what I saw? When I saw what I saw, I saw a woman that deserved to be celebrated on your birthday. And so what I'm working on with my kids is they're going to start giving their mom gifts on their birthday to say thank you for bringing me into this world. We have to start changing our mindset in this American culture. I use that with my kids, but I'm talking about our marriages. I'm talking about our relationships. Are you saying to yourself, I'm getting married to somebody that, that I want to give my life away to? I'm getting married to somebody that I'm looking forward to giving to. I'm getting married to somebody. The Bible says in Acts uh, 20, 35, it is better to give than it is to receive because that's how the kingdom flows. Most people just want to be blessed. They want to use God like they use their spouse. Hey, bless me. And they have a half definition as if the as if a blessing means the favor of God to me. That's not a blessing. That's a, maybe a narcissistic blessing, but that's not a kingdom blessing. A kingdom blessing based on Genesis 12, 3 is the favor of God to you so that it may flow through you. So the question is, what has God done in your life that you're now ready to give to this other person who is at the altar with you? And most people are at the altar or live in their marriages frustrated they're, that they're not getting what they need from the other person. But watch what the Bible says in Luke 6, 38. It says, give and it will be given back to you. Press down, running over a full measure. People normally use that verse only to talk about money. No, that verse is in a chapter talking about grace and uh, uh, forgiveness and mercy. And if you don't give mercy is what it's saying, then you won't get mercy. A lot of times you're not getting because you're not giving. God is sitting here and he's saying, I'm waiting on y'all and I got more time than y'all. But until you serve, don't have my son be a blueprint for something you're not going to follow. And then you're mad that Valentine's Day is one day, but it's not an every day. Well, the question is, are you giving? Are you sowing seeds? Many people want to harvest and they don't want to plant. You have to sow service if you're expecting for the marriage to be salvaged. You have to sow service if you want your marriage to be saved. You have to be like Jesus. Mark 10, 45. I didn't, I'm the king. I'm God's son, bro. Like, I'm, I'm greater than all of you. I'm God's son. Literally. God himself. Based on the Trinity. I can't go into that. That's a few former video. You got to go back and watch that. I'm God's son. And I came to serve y'all. So now you're going to say to me, um, well, Jonathan, I can't serve him or her because they do these things that provoke me not to serve. Oh, that would be a Christian problematic statement now, wouldn't it? If you look at Jesus, he served you. Romans 5 says you were his enemy and you got served by a king. And then you're going to try to use that logic that this person doesn't deserve my service because they sinned against me. Jesus had to come much further down to serve you then you have to come down to serve your spouse. Do you want Valentine's Day to be more than a day? Jesus came not just to be served, but to serve, watch this, and give his life away. Not a small part of him, not a little bit that he feels like, not kind of, sort of, when the person makes my emotions feel better, not this, that, and the other. Give your life away. And when you plant that, that's when you experience a resurrection. It wasn't until Jesus died that he rose. It, was, it won't, will not be until you die to yourself that you can experience a resurrection. And I'm talking to both parties. When both parties start thinking, what do you need? I am enthusiastic to give it. I am enthusiastic to give it. And when we do that, <laughs> even if you forget Valentine's Day, no one will even care because it's normal for you. 
Listen, be steadfast, unmovable, always abound in the work of the Lord, and know that it will not go in vain. Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and leave a comment. Join the family, and let's keep growing together. Let's go. What up, everybody? Listen, we just learned about giving, and you know that's going to be very important in our relationship, just like it is in our relationship with Christ. He gave to us. He's the blueprint. Let's follow it. Leave a comment. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, become a part of the family, share this video, and let's keep growing together. Let's go.